It's time for the Money Puzzle Podcast with good conversations and realistic solutions to the money puzzles we all face every day. I'm your host, financial advisor, chartered financial consultant, and president of Edgen Insurance and Financial, Robert Edgen. Now let's get this show started. Hi there, hello, and welcome to the Money Puzzle Podcast. I am Robert Edgen, and I'll be your guide for the ride for the next few minutes. Each week, we look at a different piece of the money puzzle and practical ways to solve it so you can have the financial confidence you deserve and the future that you dream of. This is episode number 15, and today we're back on the conversation that we started in episode 13 about earning more to accelerate your financial future and getting that money puzzle put together faster. Now, we already talked about side hustles in episode 13, and today I'm actually bringing in a guest uh, into the studio for a great conversation about his Uber side gig. What's so interesting about this guy is that he actually owns a very successful chiropractic business. He's a doctor, and yet he still has a side gig. It's pretty cool how he thinks about Uber and Lyft as a sport, uh, and um, there's some things that he brought up and uh, that he looks at with Uber and Lyft that I had never even considered. So that's going to be a very fun conversation. We're also going to be talking about earning more through either a raise or a promotion or just adjusting your withholding on your paycheck so that you actually take home more. I'm excited to get into that conversation, but Before we do get to our hot topic for today, I do a lot of reading and research and I come across different financial news headlines that catch my eye. So I thought we'd take a minute to look at some news. Today's article comes from Yahoo News and the headline reads, Wyoming man shoplifted at store up and applied for job, police say. Police in northern Wyoming say a man who allegedly shoplifted at the same store twice in one day and also uh, filled out a job application uh, during one of his visits. The 36-year-old man went to the sportsman's warehouse in Gillette. He bought some items with a reward card, but allegedly took some sunglasses and ammunition without paying for them. All right, there's shoplifters there every day. Here's where it gets interesting. Police say he returned to the store a few hours later, asked to fill out a job application, and then left with two more pairs of sunglasses without paying for them. Officers uh, did catch up to him, uh, arrested him, gave him a citation for the thefts, and they did recover the item, so that's good news. I've got to give the guy credit for filling out a job application since he obviously couldn't afford the three pairs of sunglasses that he stole, but come on, people, it's, it, it, I just don't get it. What the heck are you thinking? It's not like this was some 16-year-old kid doing this. This was a 36-year-old grown man. And everywhere that I go, all of the good sunglasses that are worth stealing are locked up. It's just the $15 pairs that are laying out. So what are you going to do with three $15 pairs of sunglasses? Next time, apply for the job get it, work for an hour, and then you've earned enough to buy a pair of sunglasses, work a day, just one day, and you could probably afford to buy eight or 10 pairs of sunglasses that you stole and not have to go to jail. People are crazy, but if you want to read that entire story, I've got the link in the show notes. But for now, let's go ahead and get to today's hot topic. All right, so we talked about earning more through side hustles. We talked about the difference between uh, or the advantages of earning more versus spending less. So we've been talking about different ways to earn more. So let's talk about earning more right where you're currently working, right where you're at your job. Now, there's two things to look at when it comes to earning more with your job. First is getting a raise or a promotion. And then second is increasing your take-home pay by adjusting your withholdings. This is assuming that you are a W-2 employee. So first, let's talk about getting a raise or a promotion. This is a great time to prove that you deserve to be paid more and then ask for a raise. Unemployment is crazy low right now. The U.S. uh, unemployment rate is at 3.6% as of of May 2019, um, that is a 49-year low. So it, it's crazy. There is there is just not very many people in the work pool right now because they're all already employed. That's according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. So this means that 
if there are less unemployed people out there, that makes the pool of qualified candidates for any given job lower than it's been in five decades, almost 50 years. So the competition for your position is lower than ever, and that puts employees in the driver's seat right now for getting better pay or asking or demanding for better pay. Now, that does not mean that you can just sit back, be lazy, play games on your phone all day, spend all day on Facebook and Instagram, and then deserve a raise. I think you still deserve to be fired if that's how you're spending your work day. But it does mean that you can be a little more demanding of your employer uh, to pay you what you are really worth. According to the Society for Human Resource Management, it takes about 42 days and $4,129 to find and hire a new employee. As a business owner, I will tell you, I hate going through the process of interviewing and testing and hiring and training. It's very time intensive. It takes away from the real things that drive revenue for a business. Plus the cost of losing an employee is estimated to be about six to nine months of their salary. Uh, that's all according to a great study put together from the uh, Society for Human Resource Management. I've got the link to that in my show notes. So it's employers do not want to let a good employee go. Uh, it's far easier to pay someone good a little bit more than hire someone who may or may not be good just to pay them a few bucks less. After all of the extra costs, it might take a year or two just to break even on that new person. So here's my recommendation. Do a little bit of research on your job position, what the average pay is, along with what other companies who are hiring for what you do um, are compensating their employees uh, at, what their compensation packages look like. Then, I think a great way to do it is a few months before you're actually going to ask for a raise, have a meeting with your supervisor or your boss and let them know, hey, I would like to be considered one of the top employees in my division or in our company. Um, I would like to step up my game, prove my worth, and then I want to discuss a bump in a pay that goes along with that extra value to the company. Let them know you'd like to get together in 60 days to review your progress, then do what you said you were going to do. Kick ass, prove your worth. That way in 60 days, when you ask for that review that you prepared them for, that you told them you were going to ask about, you can ask for a raise and prove that you're worth it. Now, be prepared by having some of that information about your position, what it's worth out on the open market. If you're making less than the average pay for your type of work, let them know it. If you are making the average pay, explain why you deserve more. And then something to consider, you might need to be prepared to switch to another company that will pay you what you're worth for the things that you're already doing. But honestly, that's probably not um, going to have to happen in today's work markets or work environment um, because it is so hard to find good people these days. So think about this. If you could get a dollar an hour raise and you're a full-time worker, that's an extra $2,000 a year in earnings for a full-time job. If you get a $2 an hour raise, that's 4,000 bucks a year. A $4 an hour raise would be an $8,000 increase in your pay. So I'm telling you as an employer, I've never paid people as much as I pay them now because of how much harder it is to find good people. So definitely worthwhile to look into and pursue a uh, an increase in pay or a job promotion. The other way to take home more pay is to make sure that your withholdings are set up properly. Your employer is required to withhold money out of each of your paycheck for your FICA. Now FICA stands for Federal Insurance Contributions Act, and that covers your mandatory contributions for Medicare and Social Security. For 2019, your FICA withholdings are 7.65% of your paycheck up until you earn $132,900 in a year. That's the maximum. That's where they stop taking that, uh, those, that FICA uh, withholding. Your employer also has to withhold money for your estimated income taxes. But this is where you can exercise a little control. Most workers have too much money withheld every year. Um, how do you know if you're one of them? It's very easy. Did you get a refund this year when you filed your taxes? Well, if you did, that's just the IRS giving you your own money back because you got your withholdings wrong. If you file your taxes and you get a 
$4,800 refund. That just means that you gave the IRS a $400 a month loan to use however they want. Your tax refund is not a gift from the government. It's your own money being given back to you. And if you did get a refund of $4,800, my question is this, how much of that was interest from the IRS? Give that some thought for a second. Zero dollars. The IRS does not pay you interest on the overages that you hand over to them every month uh, in your withholdings. So when I come across clients who are getting a $4,800 refund, I ask them if Uncle Sam is actually their real uncle that they love and care for. Usually not. I ask them if their children work for the IRS and they usually say no. Then I ask them, who it is that they love at the IRS so much that they're willing to give them an interest-free loan of $4,800 every single year. Most of the time, actually all the time, it's nobody. Here's the deal. Your tax refund is not a savings account. A savings account would at least pay you, you know, $48 a year for loaning that money to the bank. If you want to save $400 a month and get a $4,800 refund at the end of the year, just set up an automatic contribution to an actual savings account that comes out of your paycheck or add it to your 401k or put it into a Roth IRA or heck, here's an idea. If you've got the average American's credit card debt of about 9,000 bucks, apply that $400 a month to that credit card bill and you'll get it banged out here in uh, you know 18 months to two years along with your other regular payments. Who's going to put that $400 to better use for your family each month? You or the IRS? I hope you said you are because the IRS has their best interest in mind, not yours. So the bottom line is this, you can meet with your HR department, let them know that you need to lower your withholdings or adjust your withholdings if you're getting a big fat tax refund every year. You will not get in trouble for not overpaying and you'll be able to use that money for your family's own good. Okay, I think I beat that dead horse enough for one day. Let's go ahead and get into, uh, I'm going to bring Dave into the studio. Let's have a talk with him about his awesome side gig, and then I'll be back to wrap things up. All right, so I got Dr. Dave Lordson in, in here with me. Now, Dave is my personal chiropractor. I've been using you for many, many years. years. You've been taking care of me, fixing me up, making me feel good. But a few months back, you told me something pretty interesting about you that I thought um, I thought would be worth having a conversation about. You do something cool on the side. Mm -hmm. Yep. You do some Ubering. Is that right? I do. So tell me, how long have you been doing uh, Uber? Uh, it's been just over a year, uh, about a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. And a, a year and a half, I mean, for whatever reason you decided, I'm going to give this Uber thing a shot. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you've got a successful practice, mm -hmm. you've got staff, um, you've got a great uh, massage team, which I absolutely love. I need to get an appointment set up here. Um, so what made you decide to do this on the side? Well, it initially just kind of started out as just, uh, you know, something to do to, to fill some empty time. Because as we all know, time is money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm in my office three days a week uh, as a, you know, in my chiropractic office. And so I had two other days a week uh, that, you know, during the normal work week that I could go out and do some other things. And the hope was to, you know, have a little, little extra cash to get some bills paid down and things like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's worked out really, really well. I really enjoy it. So you said something cool to me. I've told this to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, you said it was something to the effect of like you you view your Ubering kind of like a sport or you might have called it fishing. If, if you mm -hmm. remember when you said that to me. Yeah. Um, uh, do you remember what you said about that? Uh, I, I remember saying that I really, you know, fishing is one of my favorite pastimes. I really enjoy fishing. Um, and it's it's one of those things where. Uh, you know, you, you go out there and you, you throw your line out into the water and you sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait. And then you get that, that bite or that nibble and then all of a sudden the fish is on your line and that's mm -hmm. where the excitement happens. Um, it, it, it's it's kind of like that. With, with Uber, you know, you, you essentially turn on a, a, an app on your phone and then you wait for a few minutes. Usually it doesn't take very long. 
uh, especially on the, the weekend evenings. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, you get, you get, uh, a bite or you get somebody that needs a ride somewhere and you get to go pick them up. Uh, one of the things I like about it is that you never know what you're going to get. Okay. Uh, you never know what kind of person I've, I've never had any dangerous experiences. I've had some kind of funny experiences with it. You know, people that are uh, a little bit drunk or, or, or whatever, but, right. um, but for the most part, it's been a very, very positive thing. Because I get to meet a lot of new people, um, you know. Again, with the with the fishing analogy, you never you never know what you're going to get, mm-hmm. and uh, and so it's a great way to to go meet some new people and and uh, make a little money on the side. So how so how many days a week do you think that you Uber? Uh, I was doing it six days a week. Oh wow! Yeah, I would go home uh, after I get done with my my work at the office. I'd go home and I'd have some dinner and then turn on the app and I'd just wait there at home until I got a, a notification and then I'd go out and and uh, do some rides for a couple hours or or whatever. Uh, and then I would do Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'd go out pretty much you know four or five hours during the day. Okay. Uh, and that would be pretty good. And then, and then I'd go back out on the weekends and, and, you know, catch some more, uh, not so much as, uh, not as much anymore, but that's the great thing about Uber and Lyft, which I do both. Uh, but that's the great thing about it is that you can do it whenever you want. Mm-hmm. Nobody's your boss. You are your own boss. So you can set your own hours. If you go on vacation, you don't have to report to anybody. You don't have to request any time off. You just go and do it now uh, whenever you want. So it fits your schedule. It fits your schedule. It fits your it's lifestyle. Schedule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you were going out for, you know, two, three hours, um, could you kind of predict, um, you know, what you might be taking home? No. Uh, no, that's that's pretty tough. I mean, you could you can average it out over a week maybe. But, uh, you know, day to day is so different. You know, some days you, you're out there, uh, you know, four or five hours, you may get, you know, four or five rides. Mm-hmm. Other days you might have 15 or 20 rides or you may get one that calls you up to the airport in Denver or uh, it's just so different from day to day. Uh, but you can predict. Uh, I mean, you can average it out over a week uh, and, and it gets to be pretty consistent over a week's period of, of time. And I would imagine that you probably figured out, hey, these are my more profitable times. Yeah. These are my more profitable areas. I mean, it's just like, um, you know, any business, the more you do it, the, be- the better you get at it. Right. And, and that probably also helps you, you know, maximize that time that you were spending. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I try when I first started doing it, I, I would try and go down to the airport, uh, you know, hoping to get people coming off the planes and everything. And, and what I realize is when you go down there, you end up sitting and waiting because there are other people in the queue ahead of you waiting for for passengers as well. Right. So that wasn't very lucrative. So then, uh, you know, sometimes you, you get a notification saying, hey, it's really hot down at the airport. So I'd go down there and if I didn't have a ride within five or 10 minutes, then I would go uh, kind of toward the downtown area, just start heading toward the downtown area. And without fail, you get a, a, a notification, somebody needing a ride. So they're even telling you, you know, hey, it's hot in this area, yes. come make some money. Yeah, there's a map on the app that you can look at and it shows hot spots throughout the city. Okay. Um, the funny thing is, is that if you start driving toward those hot spots, they, 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 they are hot spots because there are too many people asking for rides and not enough riders or not enough drivers. And so that's what makes it a hot zone. Mm-hmm. Well, once you hit that hot zone, well, now you're an extra driver in that area. And so the hot zone tends to shrink or it tends to go away. Sure. Uh, so I, I learned that you don't necessarily want to chase the hot spots either. You know, you go on the outskirts of the hot spots and wait for a ride to call you from the hot zone. And then then it, it, you get, you know, bonus, you know, a little extra per ride. God. That happens. Okay. So, so you said that at the time when you started this, you know, a, a year or so ago, um, you had some extra debts that you wanted to pay off. So yeah. Uber was a way, I mean, you, you know, you have this business, it does well, you're supporting yourself, but Uber was a way to kind of move yourself financially ahead with some debt reduction. Right. Um, you know, the, the, I, I realized I was paying so much money in interest charges for, for loans and you know credit cards and things like that that i just wanted to be done with all that and so uh rather than trying to come up with 
all the money all at once, I figured, hey, this is a really good way to Absolutely. have a little extra cash flow that I could put. And all the, all the money that I got from Uber was set aside for paying bills. That's phenomenal. It was just for paying bills. It wasn't, I didn't, you know, spend it on any entertainment or anything. That was just specifically to pay down some debts. Uh, and, and so, you know, it was, it was earmarked for that. It was great. Um, you know, especially once you get into the groove and you kind of know, uh, I know, I know what I'm going to be getting from my business, from yeah. my chiropractic office. I can budget from, from that. But, um, you know, again, you don't want to throw all your money at, at, at one thing at one time. You kind of want to spread it out, but you want to get those interest. You know, the interest was killing me. Well, I would imagine, or uh, l let me rephrase that. I, I think it's very cool that you're basically using other people's money and a little bit of your free time to let them help you pay down that debt that you wanted to get rid of. Well, not only that, one of the key features of it for me was everyone, every passenger that got in my car would say, what do you, is this what you do for a living? Mm -hmm. And that was my opportunity to say, oh no, this is a part-time job. Right. I do this for fun and I do it to meet people. And they say, well, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been needing a chiropractor. I need to, and I had cards in my car and I would just hand out tons of cards. And it, it actually, uh, you know, I got quite a, a bit of business from that. So you're using other people's money to pay down your debts. Mm -hmm. You're using your free time to do it, but also to further your regular business as well. They're paying you to advertise. Is That's right. They're paying yeah. you to advertise. And then you also get some extra tax breaks when you're Ubering. You know, you got mm -hmm. mileage deductions that I know Uber tracks for you. Yep. You know, you might have some maintenance on your car mm -hmm. or you're buying maybe, you know, sodas and drinks to give out. So it creates a few extra tax write-offs too. Yeah. Plus they have, uh, you know, some perks uh, you know uh, for example and I, I tell everybody about this because it's not just with uber and lyft now but uh shell fuel rewards uh they would send me a card uh for shell for when from, from lyft actually uh, i don't know if we can see this sure but you can see it has the lyft logo on there it's got your social security number for us it's a not yet yeah, okay <laughs> <laughs> but it is a, a fuel rewards card and just for being a driver for lyft and uber you get five cents off per gallon at any shell station and then you know of course the more gas you get the more rewards you get and so uh you know when gas prices were getting up close to 350 and four dollars a gallon and stuff i was getting 15 20 cents 30 cents off per gallon uh, when I go fill up just for, you know, the perks that I would get from driving for for Uber and Lyft. I, I didn't even think about that side of it. I mean, I didn't know that that existed, but yeah. now you're now you're saving money on your normal gas purchases because mm -hmm. of your business gas purchases. Yep. So that's phenomenal. Yeah. So. All right. So. I think those were the questions I had. Tell, is there anything that maybe I didn't ask or that you want to mention? And anything else about Lyft, Uber, or you know your experience? Yeah, uh, you know it's not a full time job for me. It's it, it just I don't see that it could ever be. Uh, I know there are a lot of people that do it, uh, probably in the major cities, that do it as a career. Mm -hmm. uh, I could never see that being a career. I really enjoyed it. I did. I, I loved. I love meeting the people. Uh, you know, the hearing their stories and experiences. I can't see it as being a full time career, though. Yeah. Uh, but it, it it has been uh, uh, kind of an irreplaceable thing to help me get some some bills and debts paid down. And and uh, and now I I mean things are going better uh, financially that way. So I don't have to do it, but I still do it because I enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, so thank you so much for sharing. I know you took time out of your busy practice. You came over and you sat with me in the studio. I appreciate that so much. Um, I've enjoyed letting you guys take care of me. Um, Cairo Care Recovery Center does an amazing job at fixing people up. Thank so you. I really appreciate how you take care of me um, and my kids and you know my yeah. family. So you do a very good job at that. But thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate right. it. Thanks, Dave. All right. Okay. All right, that's it for today's hot topic. I hope that it helps, and I hope that you'll come back and join me next week when I'll have my business partner, Brian, back in the office to go over why 
everyone needs a written financial plan. That should be a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun in every conversation that we have. So please make sure that you join us uh, for that next week. Also, make sure that you join us on social media. Um, you can find all of our different links to Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else in the show notes. Um, and please uh, tell a friend about us if you got any value out of today's show and leave us a review. That means the world to us. It helps us grow the podcast. Whatever app you use to listen to podcasts, give us some stars, give us some comments. We appreciate that a lot. And if you've got a question about your own personal money puzzle, email it on over to questions at yourmoneypuzzle.com. Until next week, be safe, have a little fun and go out and do something to make your money puzzle better. You'll be glad that you did. I'll talk to you real soon. Registered representative of and securities offered through Securities Management and Research, Inc., SMNR. Member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through BFC Planning, Inc. Edgen Insurance and Financial Services, Johnson Financial Services, SMNR, American National Family of Companies, and BFC Planning are independent entities. There are risks involved with investing which may include market fluctuation and possible loss of principal value. Particular investments may not be suitable for certain situations. Carefully consider the risks and possible consequences involved prior to making an investment decision. Our firm does not provide legal or tax advice. Be sure to consult with your own legal and tax advisors before taking any action that may have tax implications.